to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to greet our listeners out there. Every now and then we get really cool uh, emails or, or Facebook messages or different ways people reach out to us and tell us how much they love this show. I want to say a special shout out to Walter out there whose wife uh, wrote to me yesterday and said he's having a birthday coming up and just want to thank our listeners. Uh, the encouragement that we get from you when you contact us means so much to us. I want to let everybody know, Long Ride Home Season 1, uh, we had to use the virtue of fortitude and prudence. We worked so hard uh, to do all the things that are necessary to get it up on, on iTunes and Prime Video and Google Play. And it's up and it's active and it's live. So it's a great way to get uh, people to power watch the TV show. They can, you know, um, my, my wife and I love to watch one TV show at a time like... Uh, uh, you know, just power watch it. So may, maybe watch one or two episodes a night, uh, you know, for over the span of, of a few weeks. And so this is what people are doing with Long Ride Home now. They're power watching it. And it's a great thing to share with the younger uh, men in your house. It's a great way to get your brother-in-law to start watching it is to go uh, to iTunes or Prime Video. And, and uh, by the way, if you go to Prime Video and you watch it, Please give it a five star rating. It makes it makes. It, in fact, that's all we've received so far is five star ratings on the show. So, we're excited about that. And I want to tell people, I'm really excited. I almost missed my Ocean Sunrise Catechism show this morning. Uh, every morning at uh, 7 a.m. Bear time. That means wherever I am in the world at 7 a.m., uh, we do that 15 minute Ocean Sunrise Catechism because usually it it involves a sunrise behind me while we're reading and, and studying and talking story for about 15 minutes from the catechism as we go line by line through the catechism. I was so caught up in, in reading the early church father's uh, commentary on the writings of St. Paul that I looked at my clock and, I, and I'd missed the, the, the time I'm supposed to start. But it's just a beautiful time uh, you know, to, uh, to join us for that. And we also want to invite you guys, our new website, deepadventureministries.com, or you can say deepadventure.com, we'll get you there too is up and running. Matt Meeks and his, and his group uh, put it all together for us. He runs the Diocese of the Arch, uh, the Archbishop, uh, Archdiocese of LA's website. It used to be with Warner Brothers, and he's done a beautiful job getting our website up. So please go there, and when you go there and scroll down, you're going to see the 206 Tours to Greece. I've been studying the life of Paul now for several months, and uh, we're taking a pilgrimage to Greece in May 2019. We're going to go to Athens and Thessalonica and Philippi and Corinth, get on a cruise ship and cross the sea to Ephesus, the same sea that, that Paul crossed by ship several times. We're going to go to Ephesus and where Mary and John and, and Paul ministered in Ephesus for several years. And then we take that to Patmos where, the, where John in, in the cave there in Patmos received the revelation. And then just for fun, because it's a Bear Wozniak uh, pilgrimage, we're going to go to Santorini. Well, first we go to Mykonos, the beautiful island of Mykonos, and then my favorite island, Santorini. So we're going to do some snorkeling and stand-up paddling and that sort of stuff too. So please uh, bring, you know, what I love to see is when, uh, when someone brings their grandkids, you know, uh, on, a, on, a crew, on a pilgrimage like that. So please join us. Uh, you go to my website, you click on it, and it's a first class. Uh, everything that we do with 206 Tours is absolutely first class. So it's going to be great. So I hope you guys can join us. Uh, yesterday, I got to admit, I was at a rager party. Uh, it was almost, almost, I don't know. It was just out of control rager. Uh, uh, first of all, we went up and got to interview Bishop Noonan up in Orlando at the St. James Cathedral. And uh, it was so cool being with him there and interviewing him about the seven virtues. And then we had to jam back because we had this rager party we were supposed to go to. It was Audrey's second birthday party, uh, Gerard Middleton's daughter. And we've got Gerard Middleton. He used to be famous as a, as a, as a great surfer and, uh, 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 and a great surf instructor and a surfing judge. But now he's just famous because he's Audrey's dad. Hey, Gerard, welcome back to our show. 
Hey, thanks for having me, Bear. Good to be here. And that was a rager. And I mean, I never knew anybody <laughs> buy a two-year-old a brand new car. That was, what is that? What kind of car did you get her anyway? It's a BMW. Of course. Stylish. It's red, though. She's going to get pulled over a lot. When you have a red car, you get pulled over a lot by the cops. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. It's a cute little car. Uh, we're not going to plug it in probably for another year. But, uh... <laughs> oh, you got oh, you got one of those kind. Oh, you are an environmentalist. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was kind of funny because when we came in, there was a couple there that was looking. We did. Gerard, describe where, where you had this rager uh, of a birthday party for Audrey at two-year-old Audrey. Yeah, we had it at our, uh, I have a stand-up paddleboard and surf shop. It's like a warehouse shop, real big floor space, high ceilings, and you know, we have cushioned floors because uh, my wife and daughter come with come to work with me every day, and that's that's where Audrey's growing up, in the paddleboard shop. So, uh, yeah, it's a good, happy place. Yeah, so, uh, and Kona, Kona, the wonder dog, is oh, there. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> She's and it was greater. so funny because we walked in. Cause basically, you had this this rager uh, birthday party, and by rager, I mean there was a lot of cupcakes. And uh, <laughs> and uh, and there's a couple in there like pull in to go. Wow, this this surfboard shop is pretty popular. And they they walked in. <laughs> <laughs> Describe that what what happened there. Yeah, the party's getting started, and uh, had some customers stop in wanting to look at boards. So. <laughs> So we talked a little bit. They're like, "Oh, we don't want to interrupt." But we had, I, we showed them some things, and they uh, they're gonna come back. What? They were they were, pretty, they were pretty entertained by what was going on. Yeah, they're like, "Wow, this is a real popular surf workshop." But there were so many wonderful people there. Great people. Yeah, we we're just my wife and I were talking on the way home. We we're just so blessed to, to have uh, such good friends. You know, good, healthy, positive people of faith. You know, the good. You know, we talk about it all the time. You know. You, you need to be very deliberate who your intimate friends are. Make sure they're people that you'd like to become like, you know. And uh, so I'm I'm blessed to have good friends like you and Cindy and, and the others that were there. Well, I'm waiting for my check for my uh, ukulele playing and singing <laughs> yesterday. The entertainment. A lot Saying of people. That, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, oh, it says you're playing the. Some of the new ukis I got in. We sell ukis there, ukuleles. And you were doing well. A lot of people don't know I'm a professional ukulele player. <laughs> they don't. I mean, if you get paid when you play music, that makes you a professional. And a lot of times people will pay me not to play. <laughs> but that's still, I'm still getting paid for playing, right? Well, most people don't know that you were personally trained by Tiny Tim. <laughs> But you're you love to play and you have a great voice. But what's so funny is when we try to when I try to when we try to play and sing together, I can't harm. I don't when someone starts harmonizing, I just go off the rails. I can't, I can't hold it. Together. Right. And you have a great voice, you know. I just remember when Audrey was born, when you could hold her in one hand in the palm of her, your hand almost, and she was one hour old and you were singing to her. Yeah, it was so beautiful. Yeah, precious moments. Yeah, beautiful Audrey. And your beautiful wife. So, hey, um, we, we want to talk about. Uh, I want to ask you about Bali, about uh, uh, you know, because you you're a, you're people don't know Gerard Middleton um, is a uh, was probably one of the first two or three people that brought stand up paddle surfing from Hawaii to to uh, the mainland. And uh, but one of his great loves is to is to go to Bali and surf. You go there quite often. Was do you have any great waves or great wipeouts stories? You must have something. I haven't been there so often. Yeah, we. I love Bali, and uh, by the way, I brought it to the. That was one of the first East Coast pioneers. The West Coast had it before I we meant, had it. I meant East Coast. Sorry. Yeah. Oh well, well, it's East Coast of Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right, right. Um, well, East Coast. Yeah, East Coast of the United States of North America. Let's put it that way. <laughs> the the right coast, but anyway, um, yeah, it, Bali was awesome. So we were. Uh, you know, we were planning on having our first child, so we wanted to do one, one last big trip, because we knew once we, uh, once my wife got pregnant, there wouldn't be much traveling for a while. So, we went to the Philippines and uh, spent some time with her family, and then we headed down to Bali, uh, you know, for for a week, and we're in Sonor, and, and it was, it's just a surreal, beautiful place. You know, 
you know, big bang for your buck, you know, great, great food and, and, uh, and resorts for, for very affordable. And there's a great surf school there in the Sonoras where we were, the, like the, I don't forget what side of the island it was, but so they have uh, stand up paddle boards and surfboards and then boats. You have to take boats out to the breaks. You don't have yeah. to, Gerard. That's just if you're lazy. <laughs> I guess you could stand up paddle out to them. Yeah. That's, that's it's true. a mile but, or two out to the breaks or what? Yeah, it depends on which ones. Like there's one they call the baby break, which is where they take people for lessons, but it's still it's like a head highway that just peels so gracefully, you know, and easy. And if you're a longboarder, I mean it's just you can go forever doing longboard style on that wave. And and then um there's a few other breaks. The first time we got there though, I went I've been in contact with the, the people that own the shop and um they had a board for me to use. So Wait, wait, we, we gotta just, we gotta oh, take a break now. We always like to have a cliffhanger. Uh, oh yeah. It's already a, our already a hard segment break. So hey, so so Gerard, is this gonna end poor is this gonna end good or bad? This story. Uh, always good. Okay, good. All right, so we're going to hear this cliffhanger. We'll be back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure with my really beautiful, good, close friend, Gerard Middleton. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Don't forget, men, go to deepadventure.com and sign up for Bear's Man Cave for men only. And we have some video meetups, and uh, you can become a member of our secret Facebook group. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, I, it's called the Bear Wozniak Adventure because I have really adventurous guests. And, and one of the most adventurous people I, I know is Gerard Middleton. Uh, he does it all. He rides big waves. He stand to paddle surfs. He drops uh, sponsors metal signs on his toe. He, he'll, he'll dance for you. He'll do anything. Uh, but one of the things I love about him is he... he, he uh, he has these beautiful uh, tours out on the Banana River here when the when the bioluminescence lights up at night and just a, just a great friend and a real heart for the Lord. And uh, we were in we were in mid story. We kind of purposely do that. We did a little bit of a cliffhanger uh, talking about uh, uh, one of the waves he wrote or one of the experiences he had while he was with his family out in Bali. So okay, so you're pa you're paddling out to a place called Baby. What what was it called? Oh, well, I was telling you about the baby reef. That's okay. not where we went. Oh, so, yes, it was. Tell the truth. We got there. It was late in the afternoon, and everybody had already been surfing. And uh, I was like, man, I want to go. I want to go. So, okay, we'll get you a boat. So they took us out to a different reef that was uh, a big uh, a big left break. And we got out there. There's no one else out there. And it's just me. And my wife's in the boat. And so I'm just, we just landed in Bali. I'm paddling out gorgeous water, you know, a beautiful reef of big water. And you're a goofy footer, aren't you, or no? No, I'm, I'm normal right. foot. So right. explain to people left, left break, what a left break means. Yeah, the wave breaks from, uh, if you're facing the wave, it breaks from right to left. And so it peels from right to left. So what I love about Indonesia and these islands is, Instead of the wave coming straight into the beach and, and just breaking both ways or one way or the other or just dumping, it's a consistent break. It's a, so there's a corner, a rock corner, uh, where the wave will come in and just peel around that rock corner. And you call it a point break or a, or a, I don't know the names, whatever. Reef but, uh, break or whatever. Reef break. But you're riding down the line. You're not riding straight ahead you're lo lo as the wave is peeling. Right, around. right. Catch it outside and you start riding it around the corner of the reef as it breaks around, mm. as it peels around. So, yeah. so it's coming in pretty big and, uh, and I'm paddling out there and it's just like, I'm looking around, it's like just me by myself the <laughs> first time here. And, yeah, and you uh, don't know the wave. You don't know if there's a coral head that pops up out of nowhere. Exactly. Or, yeah. yeah. You usually want to see how everybody else is surfing for the break and, uh, and know where the, where to start, where to line up. So I'm having to figure all this out by myself. And, uh, yeah, so pretty big swell too. So I caught a few waves, and uh, and the guy in the boat's going, "We got to get in before the tide gets too low." Because there, once the tide gets low, no boats can go out. Because the mean, reef is exposed, huh? Yeah, so, but it's gorgeous. So low tide, you're at land, you can see exposed reef for like quarter mile out. You can walk <laughs> out just, there. Yeah. 
So to get back out, or if you're stuck out there, you got to wait until the tide comes back in to get back in in the boat. So everybody tries not to get stuck out. <laughs> anyway, that was a surreal situation. And um, it was another day, the biggest day. We went to a different break. That was a big right. It would break right around the corner. And uh, there's a few people out, but my wife was in the boat filming me. And uh, it was just a, a bigger day than I'm used to in Florida. So caught some great waves. And uh, But the board I was on, I was trying different boards that he had to. Yeah, to, they weren't like your boards. Um, it wasn't like your quiver. You were no, borrowing the board. Like what I'm used to riding, yeah. yeah. So these are bigger boards, harder to turn, especially on bigger waves. Well, the board I've taken out that wave had a slippery deck. Mm-mm. So you don't have on these boards. There's, there's you know, there's a, a, a pad. So I'm sitting there trying to drop it on these big waves and mm. knowing my foot could slip off at any minute. I just mm. get worked. And uh, so I was super careful, but uh, I would drop in and be like stomping the side of the edge of the board into the wave, trying to get it turned in time, mm-hmm. which I which I usually did. Uh, there's a few times I wiped out. Oh, the other thing that was scary there, there's sea snakes, super poisonous sea snakes there. And so I'm seeing these big gray snakes. Oh! Yeah. And I asked the local, I said, man, are those poisonous? He goes, yeah, you, if they ever bit you, you wouldn't make it back to shore. It'd be over. He goes, but their teeth are so small, they, they have a hard time biting, so they, don't, <laughs> they generally don't bite people. Mm-hmm. So uh, anyway, that was, that was a little weird to this, see this, these poisonous sea snakes swimming in front of you. There's so many, there's so many uh, nuances that you could, apl- spiritual applications you could have all in just that, what, that the experience is that one way. Well, did you, did you, were you able to, you said you had a couple wipeouts. Were they memorable? Oh, <laughs> had so many. <laughs> there's some. There's some though. I mean, when you were at Bali, I'm talking about. I mean, there's some. Yeah. I, I wiped out here in Florida here uh, last time I paddled out. I didn't realize my 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 fin box had broken, and I go to do a hard turn, and my board didn't turn, and I did, and I just face planted in about a two foot wave, and it hurt from my nose to my toes. I was like. How I mean, I, I got slammed by 16 foot surf in Hawaii like just a month before, and but that didn't hurt like this did. It was, it was pretty pretty gnarly. Hey, you guys, we could keep talking about surfing the rest of the show, but uh, we want to go a little bit. We want to go a little bit deeper here with my friend Gerard uh, Middleton. Uh, he's a cast member of Long Ride Home, and we're going to be shooting season three out in Hawaii in about a month. And you and we're bringing we're poor Gerard, we're dragging him out there to be part of our show. Uh, Gerard, can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, I could just ask you a real generic question uh, because I know your, your prayer life uh, is so deep and your walk with the Lord is. Uh, what, what, is what has the Lord been putting on your heart lately in your, in your prayer time? I just, you know, a real, a real appreciation to be living <laughs> when I wake up in the morning and have a, you know, every, just the beautiful gift of life he's given me. And uh, where it could have ended so many times in the past, and uh, but instead, uh, I'm still living. I'm still healthy, and I have this amazing wife and two-year-old daughter who's just paradise to be around her every day. And, and that, you know, and just to to be in that attitude of gratitude and, and treasure every day, and you know it's. At the same time, I have this pressure, financial pressure. You know, I want to provide for them and I want to provide for their future. And uh, we want to help people too. So, but in my businesses, I love my business, but like any business, it takes energy and concentration every day to keep it going and to build it, not let it contract. So praying to, to stay in faith as I, as I uh, walk this road of life, you know, not to get so caught up in counting my money every day. How much am I making? How much am I losing? What am I doing with it? Uh, how are we spending it? You know, uh, the business, the numbers of the business. The, the, not to get so caught up in that that I get, uh, you know, easily uh, irritated or whatever. And don't don't spend that precious those moments in between. You know, treasuring my family. Um, and I had a good friend was a doctor that I grew up with uh, a couple of years older than me, heart attack passed away uh, two weeks ago. Mm. And just a godly man, you know, a godly family, 
five kids, uh, you know, passing away at 50, whatever, 56 years old. And I went to the wake, which is a healthy thing to do, to go to funerals. It really is. And I, I, I stood looking at his, the body he left behind, you know, two feet away, just making myself look at, look at him and, and just uh, the lifeless body and just think, you know what? Well, I know, I know he's with the Lord right now. And uh, I know I will be when I pass, but you know, what, what great things can we do while we're still, this body's still in motion, our spirit's still inside this body and we're still on this earth. How, how great can I be, you know, to make my daddy proud? You know, all the, all the things our heavenly father has for us, all the, the gifts and the, the, the equipping and, and the good people, that if we just stay in faith and build our faith, if we accept it, then, and, the great things we can do while we're breathing, you know? And then um, that's the big thing, uh, you know, just to be excited about about trusting and, and expanding our faith as a family and seeing what God's going to do, watching the, watching the excitement unfold. So uh, You shared so much, Gerard. You know, it's the thing is, is uh, one of the things you talked about is, is the goat hair shirt we all wear in life, as one of the early church fathers called the just the daily trials and tribulations of life of running a business or going to a job or just you know paying the bills or taking care of all the little things that go on in life. Uh, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, I just I can hardly wait till I have an easier life. You know, um, mm-hmm. which is good. We should pursue uh, a life of ease. That's what the virtues do. They provide for a life of ease. It says, which means. You make a lot of bad decisions, your life gets harder. You make a lot of good decisions, your life may get a little bit easier. But it's the goat hair shirt we wear. It's the John the Baptist shirt, shirt that he wore. Those those things that tug and pull and itch and don't feel so great is what helps us to develop in virtue, and helps us to look helps us to kind of let go of our own agendas and strive to enter into God's rest. It's it's those very things that we. Uh, I wish that particular person wasn't in my life or this issue wasn't in my life. But as we instead embrace them like Rocky Balboa would, you know, em- embrace the adversity of our life, God uses that to create in us. As we uh, embrace the Lord and the, and the adversity, God's grace is released and, and a beautiful, beautiful fruit, uh, learning peace in the middle of a storm like Jesus taught his disciples. We're talking with one of the best friends I have in the world, uh, Gerard Middleton, he's the owner of SobeSurf.com. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're uh, speaking with my good friend Gerard Middleton. And Gerard is the the man that most of us go to when we're having, when all the guys are out having breakfast or having a beer, watching a game or something, we're going to pray. Gerard prays for us, and it just breaks my heart, the love that he has. And, and I just thought, instead of us just talking, maybe, Gerard, you would take a moment just to pray for the people that are, to the people that are listening right now. Just open up, just open up your, that beautiful, that heart that we all love about you. And would you take a moment just to, just to pray for the people that are listening? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Dear Heavenly Father, um, you know, thank you for the privilege of praying and partnering with you and and uh, accomplishing your will and, and good. And so, Lord, we we pray together, and I pray for all those listening or watching right now that um, that your grace, you know, that they just you heighten heighten their awareness of your love and grace in their lives. Lord, just help us all be more aware uh, to taste the goodness of the Lord, how much you love us, and how much you want to love us more if we'll let you. So, Lord, open up our, uh, all of our eyes, no matter what we're going through, um, the challenges, the, the health problems, the, the uh, betrayals, uh, the financial stress, or the joys. Um, Lord, whatever it everybody's going through that's listening. Lord, I pray you that your peace be with them right now. 
Let you let you let everybody know it's going to be all right, and it's going to be all right no matter what happens, because you are with us. And you promise you'd never leave us and never forsake us. And that in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, treasures forevermore. I mean, you you're that you're our deep, our dear heavenly Father that has welcomed us home like the prodigal son. And, and throwing throw party for us all the time, you know, slaughtering the fatted calf for a great meal, you know, for putting your robe around us and your arms around us. And uh, so, Lord, uh, thank you for loving us like that. And thank you for everybody listening or watching and that, that you have them listening for a reason and that, that – uh, your sweet grace, your, your peace that passes understanding be theirs right now. In the name of our Savior, Jesus, amen. Thank, thank you, Lord, for your overwhelming love for us. Uh, you are the Rose of Sharon. You are the Lily of the Valley. You are the bright and morning star. You are the author and finisher of our faith. You are the bishop and shepherd of our souls. You are the great I am. You are who you are, Jesus. You are salvation. You are the eternally begotten Son, the one loved uh, by the Father. And we love you. We, we praise you. We thank you. We, we, uh, we abandon ourselves to love. We abandon ourselves to you, Jesus. We love you. We can love you with all our heart because you are eternal and infinite. We can, give you, we can abandon ourselves and love you with all of our heart. Jesus, thank you for the universe. Thank you for life. Thank you for the breath I'm breathing right now. And someday, Lord, Someday, uh, maybe sooner than maybe I think, but someday I will get to see you face to face and the overwhelming love that I have felt for you and experienced from you here and there in my life, moments of great infusion of your love, be nothing compared to when I get to see you face to face. And I lift up my children to you. I lift up my family to you. I lift up my, my sisters, my, 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 parent, my, my cousins. I lift up those who mean so much in my life and have meant so much to me. Fill them with your grace, Lord. Fill them with your grace. Uh, and I want to thank Mary for her intercession on my behalf. Please, Mary, continue to, to pray for me and intercede for me and those who I love. We love you, Jesus, and we ask you, the people that are listening, that whatever their need is, that you would meet them at the greatest point of need. Meet them right there, Lord, and touch that part of their life. Bring healing where there's confusion, understanding where there's confusion, where there seems to be no way out or not, no right way to untie the knot, uh, just break loose the chains uh, and, uh, and give us uh, in our heart of hearts the ability to praise you, even in the midst of, of things like what uh, the apostles did when they were praising you in the middle of the night while they were in prison and in chains, and uh, you broke those chains and set them free. We love you, Jesus, and bless this man, Gerard Middleton, my good friend. In the name of Jesus, and the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, Gerard, I was with uh, I was at the monastery on the North Shore of Oahu about two or three months ago. I don't know if you see. I have my my I'm a, I'm an official oblate now. People yeah, are watching on YouTube. Uh, these are my Jesus beads and my Jerusalem cross, uh, a sign of the you know an oblate, a Benedictine oblate. And I love Father Michael, who I've known since he was a brother. When I was 19, I'm not going to say many years ago that was, but it was a long time ago up at the Pecos Benedictine Charismatic Monastery. I've known him a long time, and Sister Mary Jo, too. And uh, Father Michael, is he's a big Green Bay Packer fan, by the way, but he's, he's getting older, you know, and he like has to struggle to get up to, to say his homily. And he started giving the homily, and it was so beautiful, Gerard, because about a third of the way into it, he stopped preaching, and he just started talking to God. You know, he just, he, he, his homily was a homily to God. He just, I, he forgot himself in the sense he was lost in his love for the Lord. And his, his homily became us listening to his prayer that went on for t 10 minutes and so beautiful. And of course, the Benedictines, they're, 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 they, they pray throughout the day. You know, seven times a day they stop and, and uh, they start their, their day. They, every, par every part of the day is broken up by work and then prayer, work and then prayer. And this man loves the Lord. He's tough. He's a gritty guy. He's missing one of his fingers, you know, cut off. I don't know what happened to one of his fingers, but I remember when I met him, this guy's a tough dude. 
but his tender love for God as he was preaching, he just drifted off into praying. Uh, it was just mo much more natural to, to talk to God as it was for him to talk to us. And that's what we want to have. Talk about that, that ongoing experience of the Lord in your life uh, as the day goes, your, your relationship with him through the day. Yeah, therein, that is the, I don't know if the battleground is the right word. It's not necessarily battle, but sometimes it is for your, yeah. for your awareness during the day, to, to be aware of God's presence. And, you know, Psalm, Psalm 1, you know, talks about uh, blessed is a man uh, whose delight, you know, is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, in his law, he meditates day and night. And he goes on to say, you know, he'll be successful in everything he does, you know, and uh, everything he does will prosper. So I, I'm always aware of that we pray. I pray on my own in the morning, but also as a family on the way to the shop, we pray. And then throughout the day, I'm trying to meditate on the word of God. And I ask God, what do you want me to meditate on today? You know, mm. and uh, and so. You know, to the degree you can keep your awareness on on God's word uh, and, and an attitude of prayer like that is really the degree of, of joy you have during the day and success and, and peace. You know, uh, wisdom. Um, and it's just a, it's just a simple formula that's all over the Bible. You know, um, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So the more we're leaky vessels, you know, I've heard it put that way, <laughs> the more you can expose yourself throughout the day, either to your, your memorizing of scripture and repeating it and thinking about it and applying it, even speaking it over your situation. Yeah. You know, uh, this last week, I, we do a little video filming a board review of my shop and then I couldn't find my keys and I was at the, the dealership the other last week asking how much an extra key would cost. They go $500. I'm like, oh, I think I'll stick with one. <laughs> so I've got this one electric key for my car and, um, you know, and I can't find it. And I'm thinking my daughter's picked it up and thrown it in a hole somewhere, mm. you know, and I'm starting to get on edge. My wife can tell. She says, what are you going to So I realize what's happening. And I think I'll cast my cares upon you because you care for me, you know, mm. I'm not going to, I'm going to put away strife. That was a scripture I'd read that morning. Put, deliberately put away strife in your life. Stay in faith, in other words. So this whole time when I'm wanting to get upset inside, and I'm looking, and I mean everywhere. Two hours we're looking for keys. And when I have work to get done. Right. And then the peace coming out. I walk outside in the parking lot. I said, okay, God, you know, I, I know it's a test, and I, I know you know where my keys are. And so I'm going to ask you, please uh, help me find my keys. Tell me where they are, and, uh, and uh, help me just be at peace and at joy. And I'm not kidding you. I meant it out. Seconds after that, I remembered that I had gone into the back of my car. has a flip trunk, electric one, to get a, a leash for a board out. And I remember I'd used the key to open, electrically open that trunk. I'm like, honey, I know where my keys are before I ever even opened it. I went in there, opened it up. She came in and she found, boop, here they are. Mm. So, you know, so whatever you want to call that, it's still just a little simple example of being faithful in the little things and, and fighting that urge to be upset. Yeah, it's the little foxes that spoil the vineyard. Uh, we're, we're, uh, we got to take a break, Gerard. We've talked with Gerard, Gerard Middleton, one of my best friends. Great surfer, by the way, too. His cutbacks on a on a short stand-up paddleboard are pretty pretty amazing. Uh, we'll be right back with more of the more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Don't forget to go to our brand new website, deepadventure.com. and especially for the men, uh, women, you can go to, go there and get a membership to the, to your man in your life, uh, in the bears, in bears man cave for men only. So go there and, uh, and get them started in a new adventure. We'll be right back. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, people uh, 
you, you you listen to this on the EWTN radio network. You listen to it on Sirius FM. You listen to it on Shortwave over in Belarus, Russia. You can uh, listen to it on any podcast app. We're on almost all of them. But what's really cool is you can go to YouTube and watch this show. Uh, and we need more subscribers. YouTube has told us if we can bump up our, our subscriber list by about 1,000 more people, uh, they will start promoting our show more. So it's really cool because you can see Gerard Middleton and how good looking he is. And uh, one of the things that you can see if you go and watch this on, on YouTube is my really beautiful shirt. Do you like my shirt, Gerard? Oh, yes. Now, are you a little bit jealous of it? Because you probably can't read the fine print here, but this is the official Spam Jam t-shirt uh, from the big Spam Jam that happens every year in, in Waikiki. So you're a little bit jealous or not? A little bit nauseous. <laughs> <laughs> People don't know that in Waikiki every year, they shut down Kalakawa, which runs right in front of my house on the beach there. And uh, all the great chefs of the islands show up with their favorite spam recipe you can get spam spam coated uh macadamia nuts you can get spam akati spam uh, uh you can get just about every sort of way that you could pop, possibly make spam but I, I wore this shirt on purpose because i wanted gerard to see it and be jealous but apparently he's not talk with gerard middleton he's the one, one of the first two or three people that brought stand-up paddle surfing out to the east coast he's a champion sup surfer he's a he's the head judge of most of the sup events on the east coast and great instructor and a really good friend of mine and we were just talking about how um he had just how he had been looking for a set of keys to his car and, and he, he he was thinking about replacing that <clears throat> or getting an additional key and found out it was five hundred dollars that just a week before he lost his keys uh i want you to go uh origin with us you know origin had this great ability the early church fathers to read a scripture and then make some allegorical application to it. So talk to us a little bit about the keys, uh, the keys to life and your relationship with the Lord and how, uh, you know what I'm trying to say? You can do it. You're looking for your keys. You finally <laughs> found it. Give us your, give us your allegorical best take on, on, on asking God to show us keys. That's a good, that's a good question. Wow. Yeah. I mean, uh, my, my point was, uh, you know, God's always teaching us, uh, and testing us uh, so that to help us to trust him more, and even in the little things like that, and uh, to practice the presence of his uh, his presence throughout the day. You know, meditate. You know, day and night on his truths. You know, and and uh, on on God. So that's the key. Yeah. To success. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it really is the key to success. And I tell people, read Psalm one. It's right there. Blueprint. For success in life. There's two places in Scripture where success is mentioned, and the other one is Joshua 1. And it's the same thing. It says, meditate on God's Word, and success will attend all that you do. Success, to me, uh, is finding out God's will and going with it. It's like a surfer knows you can't surf if there's no wave. you know. And to abandon yourself to God's will. It used to be, oh, Lord, will you do this? Oh, Lord, will you do that? But now it's, oh, Lord, show me your will. Because I know when I've abandoned myself to God's will, it's going to be adventurous, challenging, beautiful, boring, hard, you know, all those things together, the whole uh, whole limit of life. But I know that when I'm in his will, I can just say, Lord, if this is your will, help this brick wall fall down or help me through this. It's, the, key, uh -huh. the key is in that meditating God's word is you know God's will and God's voice. Uh, you recognize it through your day. Yeah, and you know how to pray. You know, to pray within his will when things happen, there's power. He's given us power in prayer, you know, and, and the Holy Spirit. So, uh, you know, I, th I go back to that, uh, the prodigal son story in the Bible, you know, when the prodigal came back and, and the, the father threw a party for him, you know, just a crazy, awesome party. And gave him everything, and then the the older son that had all, always been there and and not went prodigal, he got all jealous and mad, and and he went to the dad. Why didn't you ever throw me a party? I've never done it. And the dad said, "What are you talking about? You know, all you had to do was ask. This was oh. yours. All. This was always here for you. It was all everything I had is yours." But the older son obviously didn't ask for it. I mean, he didn't. Uh, and maybe I'm going a little offline of what the story is supposed to be about. But that struck me this last few weeks is 
you know, God is our loving, gracious, heavenly father. You know, he's just wanting to throw us a life party. <laughs> this, this life is supposed to be a party. <laughs> and, and when we, and when we yield ourselves to his purpose in us, when we walk in faith, when we meditate on his words, so we know how to live this life, you know, and, and it's, it's a blast. Mm. And, um, and then, yes, there is suffering times, and that I mean, then when people die too, mm-hmm. you know, you can't yeah. pray ourselves to not die, you know. And but uh, but within the context of of our lives, you know, uh, God wants us to have a big time, have an adventure. I've come and, that you might have life and have it to the to the fullest, have it abundant. As, yeah. as the as the pigeon translation of the New Testament says, "I come that you might have life to the max." To the max. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, you know, and part of it is this. I mean, if 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 you were, didn't have to work, you know, I, I think you'd, the good the the play times wouldn't be as meaningful. Mm. You know, so I think um, you know there's a balance there. There's there's meaning in the struggle, you know, and there's fulfillment and satisfaction in it also uh, when you walk by faith and and you stay in faith and. And then not just that, it's, it's, you help others do the same. Mm. That's when you really start to be fulfilled in life is okay. I've learned the lessons. I'm practicing them. It's working for me. Now, how many people, God, can you send me to help, to help mentor them to do the same, you know, or while you bless me financially, I'm, I'm, wow, God, this is awesome. You know, thank you for the financial success. Now, how do you want me to bless people with this? How can I give? Who do I give? Where do you want me to give? Yeah, when you when you work hard and are you prudent, you work hard and you're wise in how you're uh, creating wealth in your life or or you know providing for your family. If you're very prudent, then you have more flexibility. You're not so chained financially, so you can uh, do more for the Lord. You know, and I love what you said. When we serve um, the Lord, when we serve people, we're not doing it. Uh, for our sake so that we feel better and we really shouldn't even be doing it for their sake so that they feel better. We should be doing it for God's sake because he loves them and you know, the, 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 the uh, need of his people, the wound of his people, but he gives it, he gives us the job, you know, of, of, um, of reaching out, reaching out to other people. And that's, that's part of, I think the joy of the Lord too is fulfilling your purpose in life. It's not just about you. I mean, God has made it all about us. He gave his only son to save us. I mean, Amen. he values each of us so much. So it is about us and our joy as his children and him delighting in seeing us uh, succeed. But also delighting in seeing, like, I'll, I'll be so thrilled to see my little two-year-old. My prayer for her is that she, she grew up as a great woman of faith that helps thousands and thousands of people during her lifetime. And that's when you really, that fullness of joy comes in, in the giving too. And don't you see the Lord like our, our biggest cheerleader? I think the Holy Spirit, especially, you know, it's like, it's like when watching my kids when they used to play sports or when they're out surfing, I'd rather watch them than do it myself. You know, I just dig on, you can do it, you can do it, you know, and we have a great cheerleader and not only in the Lord, not only in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit and Mary, but the great cloud of witnesses are cheering for us. I mean, God gives you a, God's given you so many gifts. He's infused you with such a unique set of, 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 of gifts. And of course, through life, developing those and he's cheering for us. You can do it. You know, he, 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 he's given us, it says he's prepared works beforehand that you should walk in them. It's so much better when you walk in the path that God has for you than going on some detour because you get to do the stuff. It's like while you're walking down the road, there's, oh, I wonder, like, I wonder what's inside this little, uh, underneath this rock or, or this little signpost. What, oh, I'm supposed to turn left here. And you just kind of work your way through life. And if you were on the detour, you would miss out on so much adventure. And the coolest thing about walking in the Lord's will and, and wanting to do his will is you get to see impossible things happen. It's, it's the great adventure. We're talking with my friend Gerard Middleton. 
You guys have got to go to his website, sobysurf.com. You can sign up to get uh, lessons uh, in sub surfing uh, here in Cocoa Beach and also down in Miami. But uh, sobysurf.com, we're bringing some theology on, on tap people out on August 19th. Well, of course, this is going to be airing probably just after that. But you're bringing out a whole group from theology on tap uh, to do bioluminescent surfing uh, or paddling. Uh, you've got 10 seconds to tell people what that is, literally 10 seconds. Yeah, we paddle out at night, and the, uh, the dinoflagellates, uh, they make everything that move in the water light up very bright, and it's just an incredible show. It's like Fanta Fantasia or something at Disneyland, and so I get to join you for that. We're going to surprise them that we're showing up, right? We're going to bring our film crew, our drone is going to fly, and we're going to film this great event. I remember the last time I went with Gerard a manatee bucked me off my sup board about eight feet up in the air. I ha accidentally went across it in shallow water, and uh, and the, was it was like a waterfall of light. And then I fell back and landed on him, and he freaked out. And 12 uh, manatees were there laying next to him, took off like torpedoes underwater. Gerard could see him oh, lighting up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Gerard Middleton, SobeySurf.com, uh, Bear, the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You go to DeepAdventure.com. We'll see you guys next week. Until then, Viva Cristo Rey. You want to do it with me, Gerard? All right, viva Cristo Rey. Viva Cristo Rey. Aloha, everybody. Aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group. All at bearwasnick.com.